My earliest memories are of being with my dad in the dark room when I was just two or three years old. That orange red light and watching the images magically appear on the paper and the I don't developer. think you choose that It just one. was like a switch. I think that flipped. you just are that. And I just knew I was an artist and I had to paint. And I went in there at three in the morning, found oil paints and a canvas and painted that picture that I just seen of the marsh. I made the choice when I was living in New York to focus on film. My whole sensibility was underground films, experimental films, stand right. The subject matter was often found imagery. In other words, I carried my Bolex with me everywhere. If I was hitchhiking, I had it in a backpack. It's all those experiences of traveling, of doing things, of making art. In my experience, that's the most successful work has come out of trusting the whispers of the unconscious. My process for taking the photographs is the result of a lifetime of gathering images. I started making films in the 60s, the kinds of films I made were in a way very much like these photo fields. They combine the sort of casual found object subject matter presented in a very formal fashion. and often contrasted against carefully set up images. The continuation of that sensibility has gone into the stills and into the photo fields, which I think are very much like those early films, which I called field films. There's also the, the split between the intellect and the physical, the mind and the body. The spontaneous pieces are often reflections of a kind of physical interaction with the world, whereas the other things are carefully calculated uh, technical kind of intellectual images. So today we're partaking of the ritual of looking for surf and we're heading north in the Pacific Coast Highway. I've been surfing for 40 years and I've seen so much incredible beauty out in the water. that it's just sort of natural to want to share that with people and explore it further. So I started taking a small water camera with me out surfing. It's so small I can actually stick it inside of my wetsuit. wave breaks, what you're looking at is the form of pure energy moving, which I think is inherently fascinating to people and inherently beautiful. When the structure of matter and uh, the physics of this world are displayed, they're beautiful. It's an inherently beautiful system. I think a lot about physics, actually, and read a lot about physics, and I think these pieces often reference issues having to do with physics and quantum mechanics and the nature of perception. I 
Uh, they're like equations. In fact, I call some of these long pieces uh, the DNA of light and water. So it sort of suggests that these are like building blocks of reality, or that the experience of them is a way to get at the building blocks of reality. I'm trying to deal with the similar subjects of the structure of reality and the nature of uh, matter and experience. I started carrying a still camera with me everywhere I went and have built up a very interesting archive of images from all over the world. When I get prints back from the lab, I go through them and pull out the ones I like. I make a select pile, and then I just put those away, or I leave them out on the table. And then periodically I'll go through those, and I'll go through the contact sheets of the digital images. A lot of the process involves sifting through images and laying images out to think about, then letting the unconscious kind of do its thing. A big part of the photo fields for me is the juxtaposition of these images from different places. Having these images contrast between sort of order and chaos or found and set up has to do with that idea. After sort of moving the pictures around and laying them out on the table and thinking about it, I'll actually tape them together and then hang them up on a wall. And it takes a long time to try different elements, putting them together and living with them for a while and just seeing if they work. And that may stay up there for a year. combination of a lifetime of doing film as well as a lifetime of doing painting melding together so that you have a strong formal aesthetic structural elements as well as strong story elements. They're not always sensible or logical. In fact, I think the best ones are not logical at all. They create a kind of wholeness that doesn't come from the intellect and that's I think what makes them interesting. They kind of go beyond, they take a leap. I think for the viewer, when they're seeing the piece, when they're experiencing it, I, I think often they think it is a big digital file that's all printed. But then on closer inspection, I, often I've seen this happen, they notice that there are seams. sort of stunned, like, oh my god, these are actually cut and put together. When you realize that the images aren't manipulated, that these are things that actually were happening, that are being juxtaposed, it changes the whole energy. I know when people see these, they seem very simple. They seem very sort of effortless, which is a good thing. I, I like that. I think that's as it should be. 
it's a misunderstanding that our culture is falling into that the technology somehow is equivalent to mastering. People mistake the technology for the skill. The technology is not the skill. That takes developing yourself and developing the language of whatever discipline you're working in. The human mind works on a much deeper level than, than we normally pay attention to. And I think artists are those people who've learned to trust that and have learned to listen to it a little bit more than others. That's why art is so interesting to people, because it has that energy about it. It's why people like to go look at a beautiful painting or a great work of performance art or a symphony or whatever. It resonates within each person. That potential it reminds them, it gives them a little reawakening. It's bringing into the everyday life in a ritual manner, the sacred, in a way that allows viewers to have a transcendent experience for themselves. I think that's what art does. I think that's why art exists.